Welcome to the multi-part series where we will be discussing the 1913 Great Lakes Storm, also known as the White Hurricane, as we mark its centennial anniversary. Today we will be looking at the overview of our 1913 storm. The White Hurricane was a combination of a winter storm and a Great Lakes maritime disaster. It produced whiteout blizzard conditions across the lake effect regions of the Great Lakes and that snow spread quite a bit inland. Some of the lake effect areas had an excess of 20 inches of snow. The storm lasted for days. It reached its peak on November 9th and 10th in 1913. There were hurricane force wind gusts up to 90 miles an hour and waves reached 35 feet in height across Lake Huron and probably across Lake Superior and Lake Michigan as well. There were a dozen major shipwrecks, many more ships ran aground. There was an estimate of 250 or more lives lost during this event and the damage was in the millions and back in 1913 that works to more than a hundred million dollars today. The storm does remain as one of the most devastating natural disasters ever to strike the Great Lakes region. A hundred years later we're going to commemorate that as NOAA the storm of 1913 also known as the White Hurricane for its pivotal role that it plays in our history in the Great Lakes but also its enduring influence. Modern systems of shipping communication, weather prediction, and storm preparedness are all fundamentally shaped by this storm of 1913. The NOAA Great Lakes Regional Team took an interesting look at our Great Lakes storm by using a little bit of today's technology and looking back 100 years at our 1913 storm. Meteorologists use this forensic study to look at significant weather episodes. We do this to gain a better understanding of how they occur and to gain some context into the extreme weather conditions that they produce. Computer models are one of the most prominent tools that we use to do this forensic study. Now, 100 years ago, weather forecasters didn't have the tools to make the most accurate predictions. They didn't have the computer models. Widespread weather observations weren't available. There were some, but not as many as we see today. Upper air weather balloon observations were not available, and certainly satellite data was not available either. In the past decade, a project called the 20th Century Reanalysis Project is able to provide an adequate representation of a larger scale weather pattern for storm patterns across the decades, including our 1913 storm. Now any model si simulation is going to have some errors, and a perfect simulation is really unattainable. And this is going to be especially true for a storm that's 100 years in our past. The study leveraged the capabilities of NOAA's weather research and forecasting model and also the NOAA Great Lakes Environmental Research Laboratory WAVE model. The weather research forecast model produced the atmospheric conditions while the Great Lakes Environmental Research Lab's WAVE model was able to provide the state of the Great Lakes. If we look at the overview of the storm, we had a system moving through the Great Lakes and bringing Arctic air represented by the low over Ontario and the cold front stretching across the southern Great Lakes. There was another area of low pressure moving up from the Carolinas into Virginia and headed towards the eastern lakes. These two storms uh, did begin to merge on November 9th and this storm system headed for the eastern Great Lakes. The storm rapidly strengthened as it moved over the eastern Great Lakes region, somewhere between Erie and Buffalo, uh, near Lake Erie. This was on the evening of November 9th. This is when the most intensification was happening. Things were changing rapidly, and unfortunately most of the ships began to have their problems on Lake Huron especially, as waves really began to develop in the strong winds that were occurring across Lake Huron. By the overnight hours, early morning on November 10th, the storm reaches its peak intensity with winds gusting up to those 90 miles an hour across much of the Great Lakes region. Snow is flying in the lake effect snow regions and it spreads across the entire Great Lakes region. As we get into the morning hours, we still have those strong winds across much of the Great Lakes, but the storm is starting to just now pull away from the Great Lakes region and it does continue to weaken very slowly. Although it's in its weakening phase, there are still very strong winds occurring across the entire Great Lakes region with our storm system. 
Finally, as we move into the evening hours of November 10th, it is over Georgian Bay and moving into Ontario. Early morning hours, November 11th, storm continues to slowly move away and slowly weaken in strength, and you can see the winds are starting to decrease across the Great Lakes. And in our last panel, the storm is over Ottawa, the capital of Canada, and it continues to weaken and lessen its grip on the Great Lakes. There will be additional recordings talking about the winds and the waves specifically on the Great Lakes, and you are encouraged to look at all of the retrospectives on our 100-year anniversary of our Great Lakes storm of 1913, the White Hurricane, and the address has been included at the bottom of this presentation.